Hey, what's up guys? Brian Kelly here from Zombie Guitar. Today's video, I want to talk about the pentatonic scale. The pentatonic scale is one of those things that you learn very, very early. It's typically the first scale that you're taught as a guitar player. And, um, you know, a lot of people, they kind of just write it off as like a beginner thing or a, a basic fundamental thing that, you know, once you learn the pentatonic scale, then it's time to move on to the bigger and better stuff. You know, the more advanced stuff, the real stuff. In reality, the pentatonic scale is not only the fundamental... It's not only the first scale that you typically learn on the guitar, but it's going to be that scale that you're going to use throughout your entire life as a guitar player. There's so much other stuff you can do with it. It's like the backbone of all of the other important scales that you're probably ever going to use. It's the backbone of all the modes and stuff like that. I'm going to get into all that stuff here in this video. So the pentatonic scale is typically the first scale that we learn as guitar players. This is kind of different than uh, what you would learn if you were a piano player, for example. On a piano, you are typically taught the diatonic scale first. That's the full seven note scale. The pentatonic scale is actually just five of the seven total notes of the diatonic scale. The diatonic scale is just a fancy name for the major scale. If it's used in a major key type of context, the diatonic scale is also a fancy name for the natural minor scale if it's used in a minor key type of context. So that's the full diatonic scale. That's the seven note scale. The pentatonic scale is five of those seven notes. The reason that we're taught that scale first on the guitar instead of the diatonic scale is simply just because it's an easy pattern to remember. So you've probably seen the A minor pentatonic scale before. This is the A minor pentatonic scale. You place your first finger right here on the fifth fret and you play this little box pattern. <laughs> Very, very easy to remember that pattern. So knowing that one little box pattern, you can now solo in any key. That doesn't mean that you're gonna be able to use the entire fretboard and play in key over the entire fretboard, but you can still solo in any key. For example, let's say that you're jamming with a band and the band says, hey, we're playing in the key of A minor, take a solo. You can take a solo in the key of A minor. You're gonna be confined to just this little area because as a beginner, that's all you know, but you can play that little box pattern. You can play those notes in any order that you want. It's all more or less gonna work. It's gonna sound good with the rhythm section that's in the key of A minor. So that little box pattern is movable. So if the band says, hey, we're in the key of B minor, we're jamming in the key of B minor, take a solo. You as a beginning guitar player, you only know that one little box pattern, but that box pattern can be moved anywhere depending on what the key of the rhythm section is in. So the, the rhythm section, they're in the key of B minor. You say, all right, B minor. I find where the note B is on the low E string. There's the note B, seventh fret. I moved that little box pattern up to the seventh fret. Now I can jam in the key of B minor. So with that simple little box pattern, you can play in any of the 12 possible keys. So the band could say, hey, we're in the key of E minor, take a solo in the key of E minor. You would say, all right, E minor, I gotta find the note E on the low E string. There's a note E right there, 12th fret of the low E string. So that's where I'm gonna place my little box pattern. The band could say, hey, we're in the key of D minor, take a solo. You say, all right, key of D minor, find the note D on the low E string, it's right there on the 10th fret. That's where you place your little box pattern. So that's like the very beginning stages of learning the pentatonic scale. So not everything's gonna be in a minor key. Sometimes you're gonna be in situations where you need to solo in major keys. So the band may say, hey, we're in the key of A major, take a solo. So you can still use the same box pattern. It's just that you have to locate it using your pinky instead of your index finger. So if they say we're in the key of A major, instead of taking your first finger and putting it on the note A on the low E string to, to uh, find this, you know, the location of this box, you take your pinky, you instead put it on the note A on the low E string, and then your box pattern for the key of A major is right there. So if the rhythm section is in the key of A major, you can use this little box pattern and it's gonna work.
Again, this applies to all 12 of the possible keys. Dan says we're in the key of D major. Pinky, put it on the note D right there, 10th fret. There's your pentatonic box between frets 7 and 10. We're in the key of E major. Take your pinky, put it on the note E. There's an E right there, 12th fret of the low E string. So there's your pentatonic box right there. So this is just pentatonic position number one. It can be moved to any of the possible 12 keys. So the purpose of the five pentatonic positions is to allow you to play up and down the entire neck of the guitar in any single given key. So let's say that the band is in the key of A minor. They say, hey, take a solo in the key of A minor. We already know how to locate your pentatonic position number one. We're just going to call that your reference position. So you know how to locate your reference position for the key of A minor. First finger, because it's a minor key, you put it on the note A right there, fifth fret of the low E string. That's going to be your reference position. We're just going to call that pentatonic position number one. So rather than just thinking that it, of this as just a random assortment of notes, understand that the pentatonic scale is simply just five notes. So those five notes just in this little box pattern are repeated more than once. You have the notes A, C, D, E, G, A, C, D, E, G, A, C. So it's just five notes. Some of them are repeated. So in order to play those five notes, the notes A, C, D, E, and G, all up and down the entire neck of the guitar, that's the purpose of the five pentatonic positions. So it's always going to be the same shapes. It's always going to be the same patterns relative to your reference position. All right, so if this is your pentatonic position number one, your pentatonic position number two is always gonna look like this. Your pentatonic position number three is always gonna look like this. Your pentatonic position number four is always gonna look like this. Pentatonic position number five. And then you're back at pentatonic position number one again. So that's the five pentatonic positions. The five pentatonic positions relative to this reference position, which we are labeling as pentatonic position number one, they're always going to be the same. If you know where your pentatonic position number one is, you know that your pentatonic position number two is going to be right here using that, that specific pattern. Then your pentatonic position number three is going to be up here using that specific pattern. There's five specific patterns, one for each of the five pentatonic positions. So the the shapes the patterns the uh, the patterns relative to your reference position that's always going to remain constant regardless of what key you're in so let's say you're in the key of b minor for example And then, of course, the same thing applies to major keys, too, because um, it's still the same shapes. It's still the same patterns, minor keys, major keys. It still has the exact same shapes and patterns. It's just the way that you locate your pentatonic position number one, which is the one that we're using as our reference position. You just locate that with your pinky instead of your index finger. That's the only difference. So let's say we're in the key of A major, for example. Take your pinky. You find the note A on the low E string right there, fifth fret. So that's going to be what we call our pentatonic position number one for the key of A major.
right? So it doesn't matter if it's a major key context or a minor key context, you still have the same five pentatonic positions. They still have the same shapes relative to each other. So you only have to memorize these five shapes one single time. It's just depending on which key you're playing in, that's how you locate your reference position. So the next thing to understand is that the labeling of these five pentatonic positions is entirely arbitrary. It makes no difference what numbers you assign to each pentatonic position. Zero difference. It's only five notes. It's five notes spanned up and down the entire neck of the guitar. If you were to learn the pentatonic scale on the piano, you just recognize, all right, we're in whatever key we're in say we're in the key of C major, for example, you just know what the five pentatonic notes are for the key of C major. There's no pentatonic positions. There's no need to assign labels. On the guitar, we have all these movable shapes and patterns because you know the, the layout of the notes on the guitar fretboard is more complicated than it is on the piano. So we have these movable shapes and patterns. So we assign these labels to these different pentatonic positions just so we know where we're at on the neck of the guitar. But it's entirely arbitrary. All right, so as I said, the pentatonic scale can be used as the shell or the backbone for all of the modes. A fancy name for the major scale is the Ionian scale. Another fancy name for the natural minor scale is the Aeolian scale. So let's do it for, um, we're going to do Aeolian, Ionian, Lydian, Dorian, Mixolydian, Phrygian. So we're going to do those six modes. So the first thing to understand is you have major modes and you have minor modes. So the, uh, the major modes are Ionian, Lydian, and Mixolydian. The minor modes are Aeolian, Dorian, and Phrygian. So for any of the minor modes, you're going to, you're going to be you know, using the minor pentatonic scale as your shell. For the major types of modes, you're going to be using the major pentatonic scale as your shell. Even though, as you already know, it's the same shapes and patterns. The only difference is which note is the tonal center within the, um, you know, within whichever patterns you're using. You're going to see what I'm talking about. So stay with me here. So um, let's look at the minor modes first. So um, instead of looking at these as actual notes, like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, we're going to now look at them as intervals. So instead of, you know, each dot, instead of this being A, C, D, uh, e, G, instead of those being notes, we're going to call this a one. We're going to call this a flat three. We're going to call this a four, five, flat seven. And those are the five intervals of the minor pentatonic scale. The minor pentatonic scale formula is one, flat three, four, five, flat seven. One, flat three, four, five, flat seven. One, flat three, four, five, flat seven, one flat three. So the minor pentatonic scale formula is one flat three, four, five, flat seven, one. The, uh, the Aeolian scale formula, otherwise known as the natural minor scale, the two extra notes that are, that you're adding are going to be the two and the flat six. So if you know where your, uh, one is, the two is always going to be one whole step higher. So, all right, so one, two, flat three, four, five, your flat six is always going to be one half step higher than the five. And then flat seven, one. So if you can kind of maintain an awareness of where this um, two and flat six falls in, you know, relative to the other intervals, you can always play your natural minor scale or the Aeolian scale anywhere on the entire neck of the guitar. So, um, you know, let's say we're up here. We're still in the key of A minor. We're in pentatonic position number four. I know where my one is. I know where my flat three is. I know where my four, my five, my flat seven are. So if I know where my five is, you know, I know that uh, flat six is one half step higher. So one half step higher than the five is the flat six. I know that one, uh, one whole step higher than the one is the two. Oop, that's the same note. All right, so I have a two there. 
where two is one half step lower than the flat three, so I could also remember that. So I have my two in there, so here's my one, here's my two, here's my flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven. In any of the five pentatonic positions, if you know where the one, the flat three, the four, five, and the flat seven are, find your two, you know, relative to whichever interval you want to find it relative to, either a whole step higher than the one or a half step lower than the flat three. Um, and then the uh, flat six, you know, that's one half step higher than the five. So any of the five pentatonic positions, if you know your intervals, if you know which of the five intervals is which, you can fit those other two in to make the Aeolian scale. All right, so let's look at the Dorian scale now. So the Dorian scale, that has a scale formula of one, two, flat three, four, five, six, flat seven. It's very, very similar to the Aeolian scale formula with the difference, is, the only difference is that it has a six instead of a flat six. So again, if you're, if you're looking at these pentatonic positions in terms of intervals, and you're using your minor pentatonics as the shell, and you know where your one, flat three, four, five, and flat seven are, then you add in that two. You already know how to do that from the, um, from the Aeolian example. And then you add in the six. Instead of adding in a flat six, you add in a six. The resulting sound is going to be Dorian. Again, let's come up here and uh, we'll we'll just noodle around in pentatonic position number four doing the same thing. So I have my one, I have my two, I have my flat three, my four, my five, my six is one whole step higher than the five. And then the flat seven. Then I'll put one up here. So Phrygian, the Phrygian scale is one, flat two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven. So now we're going to take a look at the three major modal scales. So you have Ionian, Mixolydian, and Lydian. All right, so for all of those three, the major pentatonic is your shell. That's your five-note shell. Add in two specific notes to either get the Ionian scale, the Lydian scale, or the Mixolydian scale. So let's do that. So uh, let's start out. We're going to use the key of C major. We're going to use the C major pentatonic as our shell. The scale formula for the major pentatonic scale is one, two, three, five, six. So here's a one, two, three, five, six. Right, this is a major key context. That's why we're calling this the one now. This is our tonic note. This is the tonal center. So one, two, three, five, six is the major pentatonic scale formula. One, two, three, five, six. One, two, three, five, six, one. So know those intervals, 
know those intervals for all of the five pentatonic positions. And then you can just create any of these other three scales, Ionian, Mixolydian, or Lydian, by adding in the additional two notes. So the uh, Ionian scale formula, otherwise known as the major scale, is simply one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we already have the one, two, three, five, and six. So we need to add in the four and the seven. So let's look at using this as the shell for the Lydian scale. So the Lydian scale is one, two, three, sharp, four, five, six, seven. The pentatonic, the major pentatonic shell just uses the one, two, three, five, and six. So we're gonna have to add in that sharp four and that seven. So the final one is the Mixolydian scale, which has the scale formula 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, flat 7. So uh, again, the, the major pentatonic scale formula is embedded right in there, the 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6. So we just got to get the 4 and the flat 7 in there, and then the result is the uh, Mixolydian scale. Again, we can take this same concept, this interval concept, this intervals plus the scale formula idea. We can start on any C as long as you know where your intervals are within whichever pentatonic position you happen to be in. You can go and make the uh, necessary adjustments. So we started out just looking at this pentatonic scale just as a bunch of random dots on the fretboard, which could be moved around anywhere, you know, just to identify your reference position based on the key that you're trying to play in. We then took it a step further and we looked at the pentatonic scale as actual notes as opposed to just random dots on the fretboard. The pentatonic scale is actually notes. It's five notes. So, you know, we looked at this as, as just five notes. Uh, we then took it a step further, and instead of looking at it as actual notes, we just looked at it as intervals. And for a lot of people, intervals is what, you know, kind of helps them to unlock the fretboard puzzle. A lot of people, you know, they spend many, many years trying to figure this fretboard thing out. They try the box patterns. They try this system. They try that system. For a lot of people, once they discover the concept of intervals, that's the thing that makes it click for a lot of people. So a lot of people are like, oh, okay, I get it. So, you know, I, I, sharp, I sharpen the four. That's how I get Lydian. Or I flat the seven. That's how I get mixed Lydian. Oh, okay. And that kind of gives you the freedom to play any scale you want anywhere on the neck of the guitar. And of course, the uh, the pentatonic scale is always going to be that backbone. So, um, 
I could talk about this concept for hours and hours on end, but this video is getting kind of long, so I'm going to end it here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Mm -hmm.